In 1476, Edward IV granted Stowe on the Wold a charter to hold two five-day fairs a year, one in May and one in October. Many goods were traded at the fairs, but sheep were the most important due to the development of the wool industry in the area. Over the years, as the importance of sheep declined in the Cotswolds, trading at the two fairs slowly changed to horses. This change attracted gypsy horse dealers from all over, and soon the fairs became two of the largest gypsy horse fairs in the country. In 1982, Jack Hargreaves visited one of the fairs to make a programme for his TV series, Old Country, and he met Johnny Gumble. Do you remember Jack Hargreaves? Very well. Yeah, I think the last time he was here, he talked to you and your dad. Me and my dad and a chap by the name of Tony Paul. Oh, OK. He passed away this year. Yeah. And, and your dad was sitting on a uh, cart or something? On the Bradford cart, yes. And here is the greatest possession that a traveller can have, what he calls his flash. A flash is what he has for status in this old gentleman. <laughs> it, this is his favourite possession. It's what is called a flat cart. These painted and carved flat carts are actually often called Bradford carts because the best of them are made by the makers in Bradford. The Bradford cart we bought at Appleby. Bought it down and we always come to this fair. I used to work China. I used to sell China at the fair years ago. And uh, we bought that Bradford cart down here to sell. It did get sold that day. And here they sell the things which are absolutely beloved by travelling people. Lurcher dogs. The clothes that are loved by travellers' children. The tinker boots and the polished brass, which is a great favourite, and of course the Crown Derby. I've seen wagons at this and other fairs full of Crown Derby, which has to be wrapped up carefully in old sheets and packed away for the road every time they move. When the fair moved from the line, mm -hmm. I mean, we were in that lane for years and years. But when it moved from there up to here, it altered a bit and it changed, the atmosphere changed a little bit, didn't it? And uh, it took a while for this to get going. The fair is now held in a field owned by a group of travellers and the stalls reach up the hill towards the town. For sale are still the beautiful dresses loved by the children and they have changed very little since Jack's visit. Alongside petal sulkies for the children, there is still the Crown Derby, so loved by the travellers. In the bottom part of the field, the tinker boots that Jack talked about are still for sale, as well as jackets and handmade flowers. Look, here are some caged birds that travellers love to have for their song. Opposite is Romany Rose, waiting to tell fortunes. Brian Vasey Fitzgerald wrote in his book Gypsies of Britain that gypsies have been telling fortunes as far back as we have knowledge of them. There is plenty of second-hand tack to be found all over. And these chickens are certainly creating a lot of interest. Some say that travellers would transport the chickens in the cages on the side of some wagons, but others say not. They say that they were usually kept in cages, hung from the back or underneath. Here is a beautiful bow top with traditional painting on the side and a very ornate bedroom window at the back. I'm not certain if this painted churn is for sale, or is it just displaying Romany art? This open lot bow top is for sale though, and it has no door at the front, just a canvas sheet to cover the entrance at night when sleeping. In the bow top is a lovely queenie stove. These are always on the left hand side, which is furthest away from the curb. 
This helps stop the chimney being knocked off by overhanging trees when travelling along the road. Look, over there are two more variations on the Bowtop Caravan. And they look as though they're the everyday home of travellers. Have you lived on the road? All my life. All your life? And you still do? Not now, no. Yeah. I'm too old now. Mm -hmm. Well, you can't. You can't travel now. There's nowhere to stop. In one town where my family are, there's, uh, they've bought a law out in that town. No caravan can pull on any verge. Really? Nowhere in the town. If they do, the police have got... They're authorised to pull them straight off into the road. And that's what it's like. So where did you grow up then? I was born in an old baker's van. You know the old all-strong baker's yeah, van? Yeah. That's what I was born in. Right where Stan City Airport is now. In a little field. Yeah. I was born in that old baker's van. I mean, how big was that? Not much bigger than no, that. No, it wouldn't be. <laughs> and, uh, but I spent our young days in one of these. In the bow top, yeah, yeah. In the old bow top. And then we went up to the Reading Wagon. Life was good. So how many were in your family? Eight. Eight? Okay. Eight, uh, four boys, four girls. And was that when you had the Reading still? That, no. Nah. There was there. four of us then. Me, my oldest brother, two of my sisters. Yeah, the others come along later. But you know where we used to sleep? Under the wheels. Oh wow. That was my bedroom. Yeah. Under there, a bit of tilt around the wheels. And that was our bedroom. We weren't allowed to sleep up where, where the girls was or where mm. mum and dad was. So when you were living in your your, your vans, you yeah. went from fair to fair, presumably? Yeah, yeah. Fair. We used to pull on the fairs. Yeah. 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 Because my dad alters our life, you know. You know I mean, I still got quite a few. And my dad just, he was like a vet, my dad. Mm. Really good horses. But this is the real reason to come here. Wonderful traveller's cobs. Look at the quality there. Long ago they trotted these horses and showed these horses all over the showground, but more and more of it gets taken over by the auctioneers and more and more becomes a, a formal sale, so you find them in the free places where they can find a bit of room and you see them bring these lovely creatures. I don't know what the name of this breed is. I don't think it has got a name. It's got a lot of Welsh cob in it. I heard them once described as the Welsh, the English commoner, which I must say is a slightly condescending name. Today, there is not so many horses as there were when Jack came here, but the deals still go on among the travellers. There seems to be a lot of interest in these piebald cobs that have just been unloaded from this horse box. This lovely little sulky and Shetland pony belong to this lad, who has just been showing it to the policeman. Earlier, the policeman couldn't resist taking a photo of him sitting on it. Tacking up this cob seems quite a job for these two boys. The farrier always had lots to do at these fairs. Even with all that's going on today, the fair is a much quieter event than it was years ago when the Romanese used to arrive in their droves and hundreds of horses were paraded and sold in a day. There used to be caravans right the way round that field. Sorry to have a lot of that, dozens and dozens of them. So why do you think that's, that's changed? Culture. Children. Yeah. Children don't want what we've done. They couldn't put up their life. Too hard for them. Since Johnny Gumbel met Jack, in the 1980s, the number of travellers at the fair have become noticeably less. With no fun fair or the horse auction that was once the fair's centrepiece, it certainly is not the event it used to be. But this is still one of the largest gypsy fairs in the country and a wonderful place for travellers to meet. For non-travellers, it is the place to experience a tradition of Romani gypsy life that has been going on in Britain since they first came here in the 16th century. If you enjoyed this programme, please subscribe and don't forget to click on the bell if you want to be notified when more videos are available. 
And if you would like to buy the complete Old Country series of 60 programmes, please go to the link in the description below.